Good evening and salutations, my Days of Alive fans. I'm going to be completely honest this episode. I get that everyone is grieving for Abby and, you know, this is a process and it, it's definitely coming across as very real and very natural and not something that's just going to be like in a couple of episodes, you just kind of start bouncing around and things of that nature. So, like, I get it on, on, on that front. But honestly, tell you the truth, I'm like, listen, after you done got through a long day of work, and you come home and you want to watch some juicy, spicy, you know, soapy stuff, and then when it starts off, you're practically hearing this woman talk about the obituary of her daughter and the people that she left behind and seeing people cry like Anna and Tony and EJ and everyone just having this very sad and somber look on her face. It, it was just like... <sighs> I mean... It, I don't know. Like I said, it's just, it's just, it's not working for me. Like, if, here's the thing. If you like these episodes and you appreciate these episodes, more power to you. I just... I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm not really, I'm not really feeling it, you know, just after a while, it's just like, uh, I can't, like, <sighs> um, so Stephen Kayla, Kayla is in the day trying to come up with a speech to describe Abby, you know, for the funeral, and it's a very tall order to sit there and summarize somebody's entire life, somebody that you watch grow up and love and everything like that. To be able to summarize that in a few words, that's a tall order for anyone. On top of that, she's still feeling guilty. She felt like she could have done more. And so she's going through that. It's a lot. Um, EJ, Tony, and Anna are just talking about Anna. I mean, talking about Abby and, you know, just how sad and devastating everyone is. You know, Anna was sitting there talking about, you know, can you imagine finding your wife, you know, just bleeding out or, you know, lifeless body or whatever. And Chad came in there and she apologized, you know. One of the very few times that she actually catches herself. I wouldn't sit there and say a dingbat moment, but just, you know, the dude is in the house. He's walking around you know, and people, people got ears, you know, but she did catch herself. She did apologize. Um, they all give him a hug and everything like that, and, you know, EJ is Snippy trying to volunteer to go into the room to get some of Abby's stuff. Like, I, I don't exactly, I think it was a cloth or scarf or something, um, but, you know, Chad thanked him. He was like, no, listen, I gotta, I gotta do it at some point. So he goes up there, he gets the, I don't know if it's a handkerchief, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> watching... This episode, even watching that scene when he went upstairs and stuff like that, and was getting it and folding it and everything like that, I was just like, and it wasn't so much because I was bored; it was just because it was just very depressing. You know, just just the whole tone of this episode just felt so like very weighed down, you know, emotionally. And I honestly tell you, I feel like after watching, after I do this review, I think I'm just going to watch some Family Guy or um, Jordan Peele or, or something because, ugh. Um, and one interesting thing that happened is when Will came by, he came by to see Lucas and he told Lucas that, you know, he had a theory that the person who killed Abigail might have been the same person who kidnapped her. You know, like maybe Abby was getting too close. I mean, Sammy. Sammy. The person who kidnapped Sammy might have been the same person who killed Abby. You know, saying that she got a little bit too close or whatever. And, you know, the kidnapper had to sit there and find a way to shut her off. Meanwhile, you got Lucas that sent there sweating bullets like there's no tomorrow. He was like, oh, what makes you sit there and think that? I mean, why, why would you just come to the conclusion of this? And I was like, Lucas... You're asking all these random questions, bro. You almost sound like you're guilty or something. I mean, you wouldn't be 
you're gonna be feeling a little guilty, would you? You're gonna feel a little, a little hot on the collar? Like, what's, what's, what's going on, bro? Um, and he's like, EJ did it. Willard's like, uh, what? <laughs> Why would he murder somebody in his own family? Like, I mean, EJ's a lot of things, but, I mean, really? And even Lucas kind of realized, like, yeah, that was actually pretty stupid. Um, yeah, you're right. Um, I, I don't know what I was really sitting there thinking. And Will left, and, you know, earlier Kate was there, and I'm like, Kate, what do you want him to sit there and say? He doesn't remember... Because Kate is not there thinking that Lucas did it in a blind rage or, you know, because Lucas is all like, oh, well, I mean, I, I looked for the jewelry and it wasn't there. And whoever killed Abby, you know, they took the jewelry or whatever. And Kate's like, that doesn't prove anything. And Lucas is like, well, what do you, what, <laughs> what do you want me to, what do you want me to do? And Kate's like, oh, well, I need definitive proof and stuff like that. I was like, good luck, sweetheart. The, um, I feel like it's going to go on for like another four months, give or take. Now, I don't mind it. I, I feel like we need to kind of get... I don't want to sit there and say we need to get past this grieving process, but this, this tone is just not working for me. So, yeah, you know, she's asking, like, you know, because she, she, at this point, she still think that, you know, he killed Abby. But... At some point, she leaves. I think she goes by Damaris' place, and no, 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 no. She went by um, Roman's pub, and she said a couple of nice words to Jennifer. Now, is it my imagination? Or did they switch Jennifer's again? I, I'm going to be completely honest. Whenever they do that, I'm just like, I can't. As as weird as it is, I just can't tell when they do it, and it's like it only hits. Like, maybe 20 or 30 minutes into the episode where I'm just like, they went back to the other Jennifer, didn't they? And I think for me, because I don't have any, I haven't really been watching the show that long. Like, everyone has their favorite Jennifer's, okay? Everyone has their favorite Jennifer's. Me, personally, I think they do, I think they both do an amazing job. Like, they, as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're pretty even, you know? Um... Which is why it takes me a little bit before I'm just like, are they using their the Reeves version? Or are they using the other one? You know, they, they both do it so naturally well that I feel like they can literally go back to back. And it really wouldn't be, at least for me personally, it, it really wouldn't feel like they're skipping a the beat. Now at some point, well, Jack, Jennifer, and JJ are on the room. And Jack was like, yeah, you know, Gwen called, she sent her condolences, this, that, and third, and, you know, JJ was like, yeah, see, I'm not, <laughs> JJ's not about that, JJ's not about that whole fake niceness, okay, and he snaps, he was like, oh, that, this, that, and a third, and, you know, she hated my sister, and yada, 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 so it, it, temper gets high, you know, tempers get high, and everything like that, and Jack was like, you know what, let me just step out, because I, I don't need to sit you know, so he steps out, he talks to Steve, and, you know, because he wants to know, like, since Steve has given his expertise, like, well, well, what do you got so far? He's like, oh, I don't really have much of anything, and, you know, Jack snaps at him, like, you just, you just sitting here, just, just drinking tea, just chilling or whatever, well, he apologized for that, and one thing that Steve said is that whoever did this, it was personal. This wasn't about a robbery, this wasn't about opportunity, you know, you stabbed somebody with a knife, you know, you kill somebody with a knife is, is personal, you know. This isn't like, oh, just some regular home invasion or whatever. You could just whoop, knock them over the head. You know, like, this is this is personal. Um, but that's all he really gives them. And then he goes, Jack goes back and talks to JJ and they make up. And I mean, I honestly tell you the truth, it's not like they really was not going to make up. It's not like they really snapped at each other. All Jack said was like, yo, listen, today is practically not the day for but I got, again, I got to sit there and respect JJ because JJ apologized. He's like, you know, I'm going to apologize because, you know, I'll sister your daughter and everything like that. But I'm not going to sit there and try to play nice with somebody who, you know, was terrible to our family since the day she came to town. I respect them. 
Now, I'm going to be honest, I did this twice, so I don't remember exactly what I said and what I didn't say. But, um, and if I said this again, I apologize. So, Anna is not there talking about Abby, and I guess, you know, she said something that was, I wasn't going to say out of line, but it was maybe a little insensitive, seeing how, you know, Chad does live there. He could have overheard at any point in time, and he does, as far as, you know, EJ describing the scene and everything like that, because... You know, and it was like, oh, well, can you remember anything else that happened or whatever? Like, anything that you can remember? And it's like, you think if you could remember something, you would tell the police. He wouldn't wait until you just magically jog his memory. But while they're talking about that, and she says something about his, his wife, like, you know, lifeless body, Chad comes in there, she apologizes, everyone gives him a hug. And I guess Chad has to get something of Abby's, I don't know if it's a scarf or a napkin or something, I have no idea, but EJ tries to um, do everything he can so he can go up there and his brother could just not be in that room, but Chad is like, I gotta go up there at some point, you know, I can't keep sitting up there just running away from it. So he goes up there, he folds, I guess he finds whatever he's gonna find, he folds it up, puts it in his coat pocket and walks off. And I'm not gonna lie, the entire time when he's sitting up there doing this, I'm just like, and it's not, here's the thing, it's not that I'm being a dick, because I, I really do appreciate the fact that, on one hand, that they're not just, they're not doing the General Hospital. There was a point with General Hospital, and it has a character named Starman, and she lost her family, she was crying for a little bit, for like a couple of days. And people were complaining that she was crying too much, and it was very depressing, and this, that, and the third. Next thing you know, she's not there singing at a nightclub. She's dating Michael. Meanwhile, her daughter and her boyfriend is at like blew up in a car with her. And I'm like, uh, I mean, I get, I get you want to sit there and keep the mood of more levity and everything like that, but you singing at a nightclub and you're dating some new guy while your boyfriend and your daughter's remains are. God knows where. Now, granted, they did retcon that, and they were alive and everything like that, but I understand, you know, how it looks as far as skipping a grief process. So I can respect what they're doing in this in this show. But at the same time, like, just watch them go upstairs, and this, that, and the third, and I'm just like, man, when this episode's over, I'm watching Family Guy, or I'm watching The Boondocks, or I'm watching... Jordan and Peele or something that is going to <laughs> lift my mood. And after working for like eight something hours or whatever, and you come home and you want to watch something spicy, and then you just get this whole episode that is just depressing. At the very least, it's just like, yep, I felt totally better after watching this episode. Um, but that's just me. If you are enjoying what they're doing, this tone and everything like that, I, you know, more power to you, I'm not knocking you, it's just, it's, it's not hitting for me, um, I almost actually felt like Friday's episode was a little bit more better, because yeah, it was still a little kind of sad watching these characters leave, but it wasn't as depressing, and it was more of a celebration of these characters dedicating their time and energy into being on the show for so long. I can respect that. So it was a little bit more on the upper side, and then watching this episode was like, oh. Well. And I think I talked about Kayla's speech. I feel like that's pretty much about it. Um, yeah, man, it's just another. You know, I should tell you, I really can't wait until they start to try to find out who is the killer and motive and things of that nature and if we can get into, you know, some sort of a mystery behind who killed her and why did they do it and, you know, who's the obvious suspect, who's the least suspect. I can't wait until we get into that part of the story. Because that part, I feel like this is going to be, like, really interesting. This stuff so far is just really... <sighs> now, I didn't say this before, but... I don't remember if I said this before. But, um, you know, they're going to be sent there doing Beyonce on season two. 
and I personally cannot wait to watch it for so many reasons. Most of it having to do with the damn tone change because, you know, I've seen the previews and it definitely looked like it's going to be really interesting. And I did enjoy the last um, season of it. I'm also going to be spent there trying to do reviews on it. Four reviews in one day is definitely going to be challenging. But since I love what I do and I love the shows I watch, um, I'm definitely going to sit there and give it a whirl. I feel like that's pretty much about it. I don't think I really missed too much of anything else. It was just very... Blah. And with that being said, I'm going to go. Uh, thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video.